Welcome to Real Money Talks. Real strategies from the money makers and the world changers that you can use to make millions, keep those millions, multiply your wealth, and build your team. Here's your host, author of five New York Times bestsellers, money expert on Dr. Phil, CNN, CNBC, The Street TV, Fox News, and The View, Laurel Langmire. Hi, welcome back to Laurel's Real Money Talks, where we're talking about how to make money, as every one of you listening needs to make money in a variety of ways, how to keep money and invest money. You always need a team. When I hear people say, I don't have time, it's because you don't have enough team and you're doing too much activity that you could be hiring. Today, we're going to talk about how to make some money. And it's in my favorite wheelhouse. I've been doing it for well over 20 years. My guest today, Lynn Kane, has been doing it for well over 20 years. So, Linda, welcome to Laurel's Real Money Talks. Wonderful to be here. Thank you. So, first of all, talk a little bit about your event experience and what you've been doing. You've been putting rooms together for a long time. I have. I've been doing light events and corporate events now for over 20 years. I started in corporate, legal, international, and then I have spent the last 12 years working in the light event industry with top spot leaders and helping them put small, medium, and large rooms together. Awesome. And today, just so you know, our topic is the trends to filling a room and doing an event. There's a lot of ways to monetize events. I go to events, Linda goes to events, and we kind of roll our eyes because they walk in completely bleeding to death, meaning they're hoping that enough sales happen at an event that they make money. We know how to walk you in completely in the black, profitable before you walk in and the show rocks. So that's what we're going to talk about. So Get a pen and paper and get ready for a whole bunch of advice. So first of all, Linda, there's a couple of categories like, you know, how do you pack a room? Let's talk kind of the, the marketing, the strategies. And I'd like you to start kind of how it used to be. And then let's talk about the distinction of how it is today. So how are rooms used to be filled that you saw all the time? Well, certainly there is a difference in the trends. So 20 years ago, it was a lot easier to fill a room for coaches and transformational leaders and pretty much even just for corporate people, you would send out a flyer, make an announcement, send out an invite, people would sign up. It really was that easy. You might do a teleclass or a webinar and people just like, yes, let's do it. We're there. Where there was a lot of stages where they had one speaker after another, you know, like uh, featured speakers, three featured speakers, and they would come in and each would do their offer, make a pitch. And the speakers would bring their people. So that was always great. So as an event host or an event producer, you could always count on, you know, get a speaker and the speaker might bring, you know, 50, 60 people to the event with them. And over the course of the years, as new coaches have flooded the industry, as more people are doing things on the internet, that has really shifted and changed. And coaches, they have large lists, but they don't have large lists where people actually go out as much anymore. There's more things for people to do online with uh, tele-summits and teleclasses and video series. Those are some of the new ways that people are reaching their audience. So it limits people going out. But what the really cool thing, Laurel, is in the past year and a half, there's been a trend while big, huge events have sort of, the rooms have kind of come down to 50 to 100 in a room. But The really cool trend is that more and more people are coming together in those intimate 50, 60 person rooms and people are being able to do more workshop style, get their information out and sell people right into their programs from those smaller rooms. I was there. I was there with Parvecker and I, like you said, you could put flyers out. You could tell your people, bring two friends and you get all the stuff for free. And I mean, I remember speaking in rooms of thousands and thousands they're out there, they're very, very rare. I mean, some of the biggest rooms, I think all of 2017 was maybe 200 people. And it's a lot of what I'm going to call the new trend of getting people into a room. So let's talk about the big ones, Facebook, LinkedIn, Funnels. Talk a little bit about maybe those three. And then we'll talk about some different strategies from there. Okay, great. The new trends, what really is working is what I'm calling the engagement process. So gone is the six months out, you can send an email, have people sign up, and you know they're going to show up, right? You have to pretty much hard market within three months of your event, and you have to keep them engaged that whole three months time. 
because there's so many other events flooding into people's path that if you're not fully present and forward present with them, then they go off their radar pretty quick. And it's even true for people that have spent, you know, three, four, five hundred dollars for a ticket. If three months ago buzz happened and you signed up for a four hundred dollar ticket, but then in the meantime, four or five other events popped up that are maybe ninety seven dollars or one ninety seven or seem to be of more interest. If that person that you had bought your ticket with hasn't kept you engaged, then you fall off the radar and you can't just like two weeks before an event call people up and say, Hey, are you coming? So what happens is you have to have this really good engagement process. So you market someone signs up. So then what you do is you go into like, here's a video I did on this particular topic. I think you'll find of interest and they get that one week. And then the next week, point them to a blog that you did that is of interest. Or maybe you run the friends campaign where bring a friend campaign comes out. All those kind of things that you might have done originally just to get somebody in the room now becomes part of an ongoing engagement process with them. The other thing that's working really well for filling the room is doing interviews of whoever it is that's coming into your space. So any sponsors that you're bringing in or any guest speakers, you do calls with them so that they get 10, 15 minutes with your audience prior to the event as well. Again, that's all part of that engagement process. The other thing that's working really well is getting on people's podcasts, interviews, more speaking engagements, but widening those speaking engagements to include podcasts, interviews, going to other organizations, being in people's teleclasses, and doing Facebook Live. So talk a little bit about Facebook Live, because what we're seeing, which is working for us, is I do a Tuesday lunch with Laurel. So every Tuesday, 12 noon, we go live. Sometimes I'll have a guest. Sometimes I'm talking a topic. Sometimes it's just about life and lifestyle, whatever I'm doing. So What's your experience in watching? I guess my point is, if it's structured and organized, it works. Random Facebook, are you seeing that work, not work? We're not seeing it work for us, but maybe you have some great tricks. No, you're absolutely correct. It needs to be structured. And even people in our industry that are like in and out, they come in and hit and they go out. They might take up a few people of interest, but the key is that same idea behind keeping in touch with your people once they've signed up, that engagement process. Same thing with Facebook. You're absolutely right. Structured, try to do it around the same time, same date every week and have substance. You can also add in your personality, tell things about your family, get them to know you. This is a really turning out to be a great modality for people to get to know you, see you. And it's almost like a precursor to what you're going to be doing and what you would be like in the room. So what some of the top strategies and trends, right? So I'm just going to kind of pull back. So we talked about the Facebook, the live cast. So videos, teleseminars, webinars, like talk a little bit more. I'm going to kind of dig into each of these a little bit more. Okay. So on the video series, what works well is where we used to put out a get my five-week course and people would have to read and do the worksheet and submit the worksheet, right? Those still are viable in certain situations, but what works better is you do a video series. So here's three-week video series, and it comes out, and they watch the video, download a, an exercise, and submit it You know, for points or special prizes and things like that to keep them engaged through the process. And the video yeah. series are easy because people can do it on their laptop. They can do it on their phone. They don't have to necessarily be sitting down in front of a computer in order to do You know, where if you're doing a webinar series or an online course, they have to be more focused and have more time. So it's really about those 20 minute hits where you can get in, do some teaching training, give them something to do, and see you next week. Webinar series, same thing. Those are really great on the webinar series. Make them engaging. The ones where it's just a slideshow and they're just clicking through are nice, but what really works well and is getting a lot of momentum is when you do your webinar series and you put it out at least 10 times. So you do the same webinar for 10 times and that will start to drive traffic. People start to see it and you get more traction than if you're just putting out one webinar this month and then on a different topic webinar next month. Okay. So that's what's working there. Speaking engagements. I know we mentioned that we talked about it, but I want you to dig in. How do people get themselves on stages? I mean, what I say, I'll just kind of lead that a little bit. 
and then you can share. You got to get so out there, but tactically come up with a speaker sheet. And I, I find a lot of speakers don't have a speaker sheet. And in, like at this level of my career, I don't need a speaker sheet. People can find me and know what I talk about. But in the beginning, especially since you don't know which topic you might go with, is it's a great bio. It's a great picture. It's two or three different topics of what you could talk about. And then some testimonials. Now, as you grow, you'd have another page, which would have ROI. Now, I know this shocks a lot of people, but if you are hired to sell, which really you're contracted to sell, which is what I like the most, and it's a 50-50 deal, then you start showing statistics of your ability to make people money. And then I just, you know, early in my day, I would just put that out to everybody. I would talk to anybody who's doing a stage. I mean, talk just about how to get on stages and other strategies than that as well. Okay, so the first thing about getting on a stage is being clear with what you're going to say. That's where a lot of people are like, oh, I have six different topics. Pick one and make sure that you turn it into your signature talk and make sure it's really well done. And then what you can do is you can highlight it with other things that you might teach and talk on. But if you have one really good presentation that you focus on that is of interest, Make sure you have a little humor in it. Make sure you have some good audience engagement in it. Work with a professional speech coach if you don't and have somebody help you really fine tune it and design it. So if you need help in designing your signature speech, you want to go to places like Toastmasters, eWomen Network, where they're working on those kind of things, TEDx, where they're going to help you to perfect your craft, perfect your speech. Then you want to make sure that you have a really good one sheet, just like you said, Laurel, something with a photo on it, how they can connect to you, you know, where they can reach you, and then just a really short couple sentence bio, and then two or three of your, you know, signature talk titles that you can put out. And then what you want to do is chambers are really great places to go, different organizations, um, meetup groups. But really and truly, the best way to get on stage is you have to do your homework and you have to see who's out there. Visitors and convention bureaus are great because you can see who's coming into town and you can see the big companies that are coming into town. You can just Google searching events in my neighborhood, asking people that you know, do you have someone that you can connect me with where I can be on their stage? It really is the quickest way to build visibility is to get out there and be on other people's stages. But you can't just like randomly say, I want to go on someone's stage. You have to do your homework and know the audience and know their audience and make sure your topic is going to be what that audience needs. The other thing that works really, really well on speaking and drilling it down just a little bit is find two or three people that speak maybe on similar topics with you and approach a company as a collective body. This is something new that we're seeing where it's like, we can do this whole weekend presentation for you and you build in a workshop, like a one day workshop with three of you being the three topic leaders. And then this is really great because people that are hosts that don't necessarily have a lot of topics, you're coming in and you already have a program that's designed for them. So that's something that works really well at retreat centers or in chamber of commerces, or I'm really seeing a lot of that happening in the real estate field where a title rep, a mortgage guy, and somebody who does canvassing are coming together and they're doing these one-day shops for the realtors and helping them to reestablish areas and territories and get more marketing. So just some ideas. Great ideas. And the other thing too, I would say to those of you who've never spoke before, is you just got to start. I hired more sales coaches because I didn't want just a great presentation. I built a presentation on something that could be sold. By the mm-hmm. way, I'm one hell of those great coaches that you can hire to like get your speech and get it done. And you know me, Linda, I would say I'm in the top five in the, probably the world that can monetize a speech and a talk. I am known for that. Absolutely. And people. the other, there's really three ways to get on stages. You get invited, right? Or you find the stage and then you offer your services and you are a good seller. So you do a 50-50 split or some sort of split on your sales. But if you're not so good at sales just yet, Then you do what they call the pay to play. And that's where a lot of stages will offer anywhere from $3,000 all the way up to $45,000 to get on someone's stage. And that's a really, if you've got money and you can do that, that's a really quick way to get on stages and build credibility fast. Awesome. 
So talk a little bit more about the pay to play, because, you know, I resisted it for a long time. I thought it was ridiculous. And it's just too many stages came to me that way. And then I think if you really do strategic contracts, which we do, you can monetize more. So to pay, say, $4,000 when you're selling a $1,500 ticket, you only got to sell three, maybe four by the time you get your cost covered. So talk a little bit more about the pay to play model and how does that work and why for some people that's a better model. Yes, it can be, especially if you're starting out and you want to really build your list and you really want to build your visibility. And even if you're a veteran like you coming back into this space where you need to get back into larger audiences, the pay to play can really work in your favor. And my favorite one is where you pay a little bit up front. So, so maybe you pay three to five thousand dollars and then you do a split of sales on the back end. And in that way, you're not having to pay, you know, fifty thousand dollars to get on a stage. But if you're a really good seller, you will make that up. The average stage that I'm seeing where people are doing it is they're coming in, you know, about five grand to be on stage and they're they're doing anything from a 50-50 to a 70-30 split on sales. And it only takes one or two sales to recoup that cost of being of paying up front. But if it's a really good promoter and they have a great audience, especially if they have a new audience for you, a new group of people that you've not been in front of before, it works really beautiful. And then you not only have connection to the 100 or 200 people in the room, but you also make great sales and you have a lot of people that you can add into your community for the next time. Absolutely. Let's talk about one other part of having a high performance and profitable event. So I'm going to switch gears. There's a lot of strategies. I mean, as we've been talking about our trends is the flyers and the word of mouth and even some of the affiliate programs don't work anymore. So we talked LinkedIn, Facebook, meetup groups getting on speaking engagements, do the pay-to-play. All of those can fill your room, making it a profitable room. So I want to talk about two more real quick topics. One is how do you get sponsors? And then we're going to end with with the big one, which I think people leave way behind, which is how do you book a right hotel? So let's switch to sponsors. It's a huge part of coming in to what I call black event, meaning you come in profitable, you come in and you're not hoping, hoping the event covers your money. You've already covered it. So sponsors, Linda, how do you get them? So sponsors are really, that's the new area that we're really working and and pushing a lot with and learning a lot about. There was a period of time where we could just say, hey, we've got a sponsor, you know, booth available for three grand and people would just sign up. But as a lot of sponsors are also becoming speakers and you see more and more, especially in the coaching industry, you see more and more people that are playing there that are sitting on both sides of that fence. They're also a sponsor and a speaker. You have to be able to really give value to your sponsors. So you, number one, you have to, if you say you're going to have a room of 60, you better have a room of 60. If you are not going to be able to have that sponsor be a keynote speaker or speak for an hour, then you have to at least give them 10, maybe five to 10 minutes on stage so that they do get in front of your audience. What I'm finding works really well is if you give, it's almost like a, a thousand a minute, so to speak. So if you have a $3,000 sponsor spot, you give them three minutes on stage. If you have a $5,000 sponsor spot, you give them five minutes on stage. Anything above that, you know, you can do about 10 minutes on stage. They will love that, and that makes it really well. And the way that you go about getting sponsors is, one, you have a good package with a lot of different options for them to select. You keep your prices valuable. You keep the prices at a price point that's affordable for them. And just enough of a teaser that if you have speaker spots open, it's enough of a price difference that they get more value for speaking, so they might jump into those speaker spots for you. And then if you're just looking for table vendors, people that don't necessarily speak, so like Direct Pay and FusionSoft, ClickFunnels, you know, the gal that has a beautiful clothing line or the essential oil lines, those kind of people, then you can lower those price points down into that 3000 level and offer them space as vendor section, which is really fun at a lot of events to have because it gives your audience other things to engage in and have conversations around and creates a little bit more buzz. But as far as coming into the black and having sponsors that prepay ahead of time, I think the best way to make that attractive is to give them some stage time. And pretty much most of my clients that are allowing sponsors to have a little bit of stage time, we're not having too much difficulty getting sponsors to come aboard on their event. All right. 
Next thing, big thing, hotels. And you watched us from the team you took over who swore that, you know, twenty, thirty thousand dollar weekends were all they got. And you know, you know, with your team, you've got us down into a really tight ROI and in beautiful hotels, Marriott, Hyatt's and all of that. And it's not ridiculous amount of money. I'll just say our average ticket is in the five, six thousand range. And we put on really great shows with food. So talk to just about how do you have that be profitable and provide value in the hotel side. So the biggest way to do that, using you guys as an example, and I have a lot of other clients that are doing this as well, we're losing the pipe and drape, we're losing the double screen room, we're losing all those bells and whistles, right? Because that's where a lot of the big expense comes. And instead, what you do is you do a nice banner up front, you know, maybe do an eight foot banner up front, a couple pop ups on the side, table with some product and flowers on it, and then you set your room theater style. So you're not needing as much space as you do when you're doing, you know, full-blown banquet tables or classroom style tables. And you also don't do the big coffee breaks and food and beverage service or anything like that. You really turn it into a, we're here to learn, grow, work, get something of value and sign up for our next coaching program or sign up for what we have to offer. And so when you go to the hotels, we do what we call a catering contract as opposed to a sales contract. A sales contract with a hotel means that you're going to take space, you're going to take guest rooms, and you're going to take a high food and beverage. So instead, you want to go in and do what we call a catering contract. So that means that you're going to look for space at the hotel that the hotel is not going to be using for other events. And you're going to come in with a small room rental on it. So anywhere from $250 to $750 a day. And then you're going to come in with a really low food and beverage minimum. So maybe you're just going to provide one coffee break to welcome people, and then maybe a few little snacks in the afternoon. Maybe the second day, you again, you might just do some snacks. And then the third day, wrap it up you know, with a wine and cheese celebration or something like that. So you can keep your food costs anywhere from 1500 to 3000 on a three-day event. So that pencils in, like you said, to about a $5,000 event keeps it affordable. And for most coaches out there that are selling anywhere from five to $15,000 programs, it just takes a, a couple people in the room that buy a program to make that profitable. So if you've been enjoying this conversation is, you know, what are the trends? How do you fill a room? So we went through a variety of those techniques. How do you make it profitable, which is sponsorships, managing hotels. There's a lot more. If you would like a conversation with Linda or myself, talk about it. Go to askloral.com and put in your name, phone number, and email, and we will have a conversation with you. And just make a request or ask a question. And Linda, I want to thank you. Is there any last words of wisdom you give to these folks? Yes, do it. Get out and speak. (laughs) And if nothing else, put your own group of people in a room that you know. Even if you start with 10 people in a room, just start doing it. And start making money. And we are here to help you. We have a a lot of guaranteed. When I say guaranteed, we just have such proven strategies that they just work. And it's heartbreaking when I watch some of these beginners go back to what I call old techniques or even worse. Think that somebody in a beginner mood, like I just coached somebody and she hasn't called me back because she's so like, I'm so wrong and she's so right. She thinks she's going to find a quarter million dollar sponsor. She has no speaking history she has an online history, but no offline history. And she said, no, I'm going to find one speaker, quarter million dollars, and I'm just going to make a lot of money. And I thought, oh, girl, you are blind. Not going to happen. Absolutely. Because of the internet and because of the way that people are marketing and coaching, we're all becoming a little bit more savvy than we were before, right? So those big, huge sponsors like that that come in for a quarter million and all of that, those are very, very, very rare and hard to find anymore. Pretty much those dollars are left for... The big guys, you know, traffic and conversion, internet marketers, you know, big, big, big events. So the reality of it is you just have to get creative. You have to get innovative and you really just have to keep realistic goals. And one of the things we didn't touch on that I'll just end with this, Laurel, is that don't do the 197 refund ticket. Have people invest in themselves to come to your event. Even if it's just a $97 ticket, the people are finding that the people that invest even just $97, they're going to be a better buyer. They come prepared. 
They've already invested in themselves and they're ready to take action. I love it. So again, you want to learn how to make money and do some of this, go to askworld.com, put in your name, phone number, email us, how it works, and then ask whatever question you need to ask. And let's get busy making you a whole bunch of money. Your Laurel's Road Money Talks. We will be back with more coming soon. Linda, thank you for being here. And if you enjoyed this, please pass it, make it viral. Download my app, Ask Laurel, in any iTunes or app stores. And uh, stay tuned there. Talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to the Real Money Talks podcast. Your host has been Laurel Langmire, author of five New York Times bestsellers, money expert on Dr. Phil, CNN, CNBC, The Street TV, Fox News, and The View. Want to learn more about off Wall Street investing, tax strategies, and multi-million dollar business strategies? Visit laurelsrealmoneytalks.com for past episodes, show notes, and resources. For some special wealth building gifts only for Laurel's podcast listeners, visit laurelsrealmoneytalks.com slash podcast gifts. Do you have a burning question for Laurel? Visit asklaurel.com to submit your question, and it may just be covered on a podcast episode. So stay tuned and be sure to subscribe to get new episodes every week. We'll be right back.